Hello, this is Haku Dabin, and I am here with SCP-80, 81, 82, 83, and 84. Please like the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel if you're interested. Starting with SCP-80, also known as Dark Form. Item Number, SCP-80, Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures SCP-80 is to be contained in a 4x4 meter room with a smaller antechamber located on the south wall to provide researchers with access. On the north wall, an, obser an observation room is to be connected, overlooking the main room through a window with thick black curtains that release only when the door to the observation room is closed. No attempts should be made to remove SCP-80 from its enclosure at any time. No more than one and seven and what an incandescent and light bulb is being illuminated in, in the main room at any time. Absolutely no devices capable of producing light should be brought into the room. Under no circumstances should anything be brought into SV-80's containment room that has the ability to shroud, conceal, or otherwise hide SCP-80. Failure to adhere to this will result in disciplinary action. Description It is unknown if SCP-80 has a physical mass or body as all attempts to interact with it that previously have, have failed and have been met with adverse earth effects. See Experiment Log 82 Researchers and personnel have described as seeing SCP-80 as various shadows and humanoid effigies with the only common attribute being two smoking eyes. <laughs> Ow, that hurt. Excuse me. I almost sneezed there, but I had to stop it. It has come to the attention of researchers that SCP-80 induces uncontrollable drowsiness upon anyone entering its chamber. After approximately 30 minutes, any person in, in observing it will be forced into REM sleep and may suffer irreversible psychological damage. This effect occurs even if SCP-80 is being observed from a, a separate room. See Instant 81. If at any time SV-80 finds a way to hide itself, such as in a cupboard, under a bed, covered in a sheet, etc., it will disappear entirely. <clears throat> Additionally, if any light enters SCP-80's containment room with a greater luminance than that produced by a standard odorant nightlight, SCP-80 will instantly vanish. Both of these events are considered a containment breach and any personnel responsible for this will be severely reprimanded and possibly reassigned. For all inquiries regarding the origin of SVAD, as requirement by, by the Foundation, please see attached redacted. <sighs> On a day, Dr. Blank and his immediate staff have begun complaining of increasingly stressful dreams. As he has had the most interaction with SCP-80 thus far, it has been theorized that SCP-80 is somehow capable of some type of mimetic effect on nearby personnel, even if not being directly observed. <sighs> Addendum 80B. As of a, a later date, following Dr. Blank's recent suicide, all personnel located in SCP-80 sector are to be are to keep dream journals and are to inform psych psychologists if dreams become increasingly violent or nightmarish in nature. Addendum 80C. All staff are reminded that blackout currents in the observation room will not release if the door is not closed, and that exposure time should not exceed 30 minutes for any reason. See Incident 81. Addendum 80D. It has come to the attention of senior research staff that some researchers are unable to see SV-80 and may be entirely immune to its effects. Any personnel that, that thinks they are incapable of receiving SV-80, please report to Dr. Blank for mandatory testing.
Hmm. Addendum 80E. It has been suggested, following incident in 81, that a Class C personnel be fed to SV-80 once per month in order to neutralize SV-80's effect on the mental health of on-site personnel. O5 blank. Approved. Incident 81. On a date, a planned observation was conducted by two senior researchers. The researchers entered the observation room and the blackout credits were released, leaving the room to be safely shielded from SCP-80 effects. As said in the past, the researchers began observing SCP-80. Approximately 40 minutes after the observation began, both researchers suddenly fell asleep. Upon their retrieval, data expunged. It should be noted that following this incident, all on-site personnel that had reported suffering nightmares and feelings with the knees had a good night's sleep and were generally in a more pleasant mood the following day. Note, all personnel are requested to stop referring to SCP-80 as the Boogeyman, Dr. Blank. Let's read this experiment log before we move on. Experiment 82A Date unknown Subject D81 Male 19 years old That's pretty young for that sentence. Anyway, procedure Subject was sent into a room with SCP-80 Details Subject entered room containing SCP-80 at 226 XPM or 1426 if you want to be like that. Begin log to 26 p.m. Dr. Blank, D81, do you see anything? No, it's pitch black in here. Subject is silent for several minutes. Did you just let something in here? It feels like something is watching me. No, D81, we did not let anything into the room. What the frick is that? D81 is seen tripping and falling to the floor. What do you see? This giant blackness, like something just standing in a corner. Oh god, it's looking at me. It's looking right at me. Let me out! D81 proceeds to pound on the door or, or leading into the antechamber. It's looking at you? Please describe its physical appearance. I don't know. Oh god, let me out. I want to be here. D81 starts whimpering. Tell me what it looks like, D81. Then we can let you out. It looks like a figure hunched in a corner. Is it human? It's too big to be human. D81 yawns. It's still looking at me, Doc. Still staring. Move closer to it. D81 and proceeds to move to the corner of the room, obviously experiencing difficulty staying on his feet. Its eyes look like vapor, just staring at me. Like it wants to do something. D81 falls to the floor again. D81, can you hear me? Subject is unresponsive for the next five minutes. End log. 2.58 p.m. <sighs> Subject presumably collapsed. Subsequently, no remains of D81 were found, and it is assumed SCP-80 consumed D81. Experiment 82 B. Unknown date. Subject. D. 82. Female, 30 years old. Procedure. Subject was sent into a room with SCP-80 with intent to physically interact with SCP-80. Subject enter room containing in SCP-80 at 5.35 under instruction of Dr. Blank. 
Begin log, 535. Tell me what you see. I don't see Jack... F crap. Why is it so... All dark in here? After several of minutes. Holy frick, what is that? It's just standing in the middle of the room. Describe what you see. It's just standing in the middle of the room. I can make out two eyes, I guess. I feel drowsy. Did you sleep with me something or what? Reach out and touch it. Tell me what you feel. You want me to touch that thing? Yes, please proceed. After a few minutes of arguments, it is presumed that D82 proceeds to touch SP80, and at this time the subject becomes unresponsive. I'm gonna skip some of the text. I'm really tired, sorry. Subject was found asleep in the corner of SCP-80's containment room. Subject appears to appear to suffer no physical harm during the experiment. Subject was interviewed by after medical staff deemed D-82 to be in good physical health. See attached interview log, log 81. Experiment D-80 Experiment 83C. Date is unknown. Subject act D83. Male 24 years old. Procedure. Subject was sent into the room with SCP-80, having been given an, a powerful amphetamine. Upon entering the room, subject was advised to tell researchers what he saw. Subject described as a shadow like figure. Or in the center of the room. Subject was informed to stand still and inform researchers of any changes. Ten minutes into the experiment, subject began yelling and became noticeably frightened. Subject became uncooperative and attempted to escape the containment room. Upon failing to escape, subject announced an attempt to harm SV80 and presumably attempted to attack it. Upon doing so, subject immediately collapsed. D83, his body was recovered from. Um, SV-80's containment room soon afterwards, having apparently suffered a major heart attack. Upon collecting D-83's body, researchers described an intense feeling of unease, a feeling of being in watch, as well as a more acute awareness of SCP-80's presence in the room. Interview Log 81 Interviewed D-82 Interviewer Dr. Blank Forward D-82 was interviewed following an inconclusive experiment involving SCP-80 where the subject was secured in the room with SCP-80 for 37 minutes. Begin Log Please describe what you remember from the experiment. D-82. Dr. Blank later notes that D-82 had a spaced out expression and tone of voice. You told me to walk over to it and touch it. I didn't want to. I didn't. What happened when you touched it? When I touched it? Have you seen that thing? Touch it? I couldn't move. It was staring at me and I just couldn't move. You didn't respond for several minutes. What were you doing? Becoming increasingly agitated. It just stared at me. I couldn't move. I couldn't breathe. <sighs> Calm down, D82. Take a deep breath. Do you remember falling asleep? It just stared and stared, not moving, but I felt something. I was on the floor and they were all over me. They're here! D-82 begins to scream, and abruptly get to their feet. No, they're trying to take me away! Back to that thing! I won't go back! You can't make me go back in there! D-82 lunges at Dr. Blank. It's subsequently terminated. End log. Well, that was dark.
Now we move on to SCP-81, Spontaneous Combustion Virus. Item of number SCP-81, Object Class Euclid, Special Containment Procedures. Only those with level 4 clearance and ready for permission from blank may have access to SCP-81. Full hazard gear, including suit, gloves, and an oxygen tank, must be worn at all times when in the containment area. Suits must be spread with a disinfectant shower before leaving the containment area. If containment is breached, the entire area must be exposed to ultraviolet light and then bleached. Those who are suspected of being infected must be quarantined for at least 10 days. If no symptom is manifest after the 10th day, then quarantine can be lifted. Description: SCP-81 is a contagious virus that appears to be a mutated version of the blank virus, but with segment in its RNA instead of blank. The virus is human-specific, but it's spread by rats who act as passive carriers. SCP-81 can be spread through intercourse and exposure to infected blood. SCP-81 uninfects adipocytes and leukocytes, inducing both to absorb nutrients at a highly accelerated rate. As nutrients are, are absorbed, infected B cells produce and secrete large quantities of a modified human antibody. Adipocytes expand and proliferate, and the organism's caloric intake increases. When the concentration of adipose of tissue reaches a critical point, the viral antibodies instigate systemic cell lysis, followed by an unknown process leading to the spontaneous combustion of the infected individual. Hmm. There is a one week incubation period before initial symptoms begin to occur. The duration of these symptoms and this depends entirely on the subject body fat percentage of the infected. The infection proceeds through four distinct stages. Stage 1. In the first week, there are no major symptoms. Those subjects may report being slightly tired. Stage 2. In the second week of infection, subjects will begin to experience hot flashes and an increased appetite. Stage 3. Infected subjects dem demonstrate extreme Oliphagia, uh, they will do anything in their power to obtain food or anything edible. During this stage, metabolism slows down significantly and weight gain proceeds rapidly. There is no set time that will elapse before the fourth and final stage. In order for the virus to complete its life cycle, the victim must be composed of 55% body fat. Stage 4. Once the subject reaches 55% body fat, the urge to eat will stop. The subject reports those subjects report an increased instant instances of hot flashes. Soon afterward, the body will go through an extremely violent version of widespread cell lysis. As cells burst, and modi modified uh, antibodies catalyze the ignition of fatty compounds through unknown means. The body is incinerated from the inside via uh, the wick effect, with the additional fat serving as a fuel source. Because stage 4 is largely asymptomatic, subjects are never aware when combustion will occur and the exact timing is apparently random. Addendum 81-1 The first recorded incident of SCP-81 was recorded in 1763 by Frenchman Jonas in his book The Indiscovery E. Humani Spontane uh, Ice. He wrote about a case in Paris where a man was acquitted of killing his wife as Jerry agreed that the wife died due to spontaneous human combustion. As you know that the wife was that the woman was incredibly overweight at the time for death. It was not until the death of Mary Reeser on July second in nineteen fifty one that SCP eighty one was brought to foundation and attention. Despite the Foundation's best efforts, this information was leaked to the national media along with pictures of the incident. It is believed that most recorded space cases of, S of spontaneous 
spontaneous combustion are caused by SCP-81. Addendum 2. SCP-81 is estimated to have existed since the 900s and thought to have originated in blank. Because of widespread poverty and malnutrition present in many European cultures at the time, instances of third and fourth stage infections were rare. North America has experienced the most cases of SCP-81 in the last century, but because of leaner conditions and Active rat at population control, SV81 cases have dropped significantly. Fewer than blank people a year die from late stage SCP 81. Other than three, due to the United States current obesity epidemic, it is crucial that wild SCP 81 be eradicated. The exposure or that would result from right and scale of the op epidemic would be disastrous to successful containment procedures. Dr. Blank. Yeah, and Dr. Blink is all over the place. And so is the Agent and Bob. Addendum 81-4. During testing, it has been discovered that people who have diabetes have a natural immunity to SCP-81. This has not helped in the development of a treatment for the virus and rents ends incurable. Wild infection ends that expunge and an alternative cause of death provided. Addendum 81.5. It was discovered by Agent Blink that SCP-81 can spread by exposure to the, the ashes of a deceased victim. Containment and epidemic contingency protocols are being amended. An emergency for service is this personnel who respond to Ms. Blank's calls have been detained for evaluation. Dr. Blank. Now we go to SCP-82. Fernand the Cannibal. I personally never really found that this one very interesting, but I'll read it for you all. Well, anyway, maybe actually reading the document will make it more interesting. Item number SCP 82. Object class Euclid. Special containment procedures. In large living quarters, is located at armed biocontainment in Area 14, have been appropriated for the suppression and freezement of SCP-82. While standard weapons have little effect in policing SCP-82, cooperation is easily attained through charade. Subject is currently under the impression that it has been made a the King of Thrance and that its containment area is actually a grand palace designed for its protection. All interacting personnel are to be made aware of this charade and are ordered to follow the ruse. Housekeeping personnel are to be Class D personnel only. Guessing guards just don't want to deal with that. Guards tasked with the containment of SCP-82 are to be given in level 2 clearance but are instructed to refrain from interacting directly with SCP-82. Description SCP-82 is genetically human. However, through some process, either chemically, hormonal, or cancerous, or supernatural, SV-82 has grown to giant proportions, approximately 2.4 meters tall, around 8 feet, and weighing over 310 kilograms. That's about 700 pounds. SCP-82's physical characteristics are grossly disproportional. It has a, a slightly... A pointed balding head, a large ratted chin and jaw, a bulbous nose, and dark sucking eyes. Subject is both overweight and possesses a great amount of muscle mass. Forearms are muscular and dangerous with a circumference of about 71 centimeters, which is 28 inches. The breadth of the subject's fist is merely 30 centimeters is along the knuckles, almost 12 inches. The feet are larger, or small in proportion to the subject's body. Men's size 14 US. Subject's skin is tan dark, and overall physical appearance is compounded by numerous scars. The results of years of attention and containment. Most x rays have been and difficult to interpret because of the high density of its muscle dis tissue. But scans have revealed countless bullets 
and even several knife and sword blades lodge in SCP-82's flesh. Before we continue, I am going to refer to SCP-82 as Ferdinand, as that is uh, apparently its name. Ferdinand refers to itself as Ferdinand and speaks fluent French and heavily accented English. When it speaks, it does so through enormous, clenched teeth. Ferdinand only parts teeth to eat food and to sing. Subject will sing songs of its own pleasing, ranging from forgotten Victorian era bar songs to modern classical, while typically while cooking and eating. Fernand does not comb the hair on the sides of its head, and does, but does cut it, and shaves with a large butcher knife originally provided for food preparation. It should be noted that even facial hair is exaggerated, is exaggerated. a single strand being as thick as a millimeter, similar in thickness and appearance to graphite of a mechanical pencil. That's some thick hair. I feel bad for, for him now. Occasionally, Fernand will clench its teeth so hard the gums bleed, but it is not known why. This is considered normal. The demeanor of, S of Fernand is very amicable and carefree. Fernand has accrued a wide wardrobe over its time of incarceration. It enjoys dressing up in many different fashions, including former wear, military uniform, as a clown, and in women's clothing. So I guess as I should be calling them a day. New pieces should be available upon request. Fernand often attempts to joke and is usually polite to personnel, often inviting them to dinner. However, visiting in personnel should be aware that at any moment as Fernand is capable of attacking and voraciously eating others. Some people uh, often apologize for their lack of, of manners for interrupting someone's conversation by devouring their head, for making a mess of their quarters. Fernand's jaw is strong enough to crack a bone, and they seem to enjoy skulls. Attacks are seemingly at random with no motivation. Whether or not Fernand has recently eaten and has no effect on this cannibalistic hunger. Fernand is incapable of differentiating fact from fiction. When he reads or watches subjects or films, on several occasions, Fernand and has expressed a great desire to meet their favorite person, Hannibal Lecter, and subject and Fernand will believe that all television and programming is some sort of reality television. Though Fernand has shown high intelligence in the form of memory and puzzle solving, the concepts of parody, satire, and fiction are completely beyond their understanding. Fernand apparently understands the concept of lying, has shown to know when others are blatant in lying, and generally it tells obvious falsehoods when asked about its past. According to Fernand, they are a vampire, a homunculus, big bird, Andre the Dot Giant, Napoleon, Obelisk, sidekick of Asterix, Dr. Bright, the student needs to stop, uh, uh, I've convinced people that uh, uh, they are him. The Hulk, Alexander the Great, Captain Hook, Sherlock Holmes, Dr. Frankenstein, or Frankenstein's Monster. When questioned about these lies, he, I mean, they give the excuse, but I only lie when it's through my teeth. Strange enough, that's the only way they communicate, so I guess they're always lying. Moving on, we have SCP-83, an abandoned row home. Location SCPs, we don't see these very often. <sighs> Item number, SCP-83, Object Class Euclid, Special Containment Procedures. SCP-83 is to be kept under constant video surveillance with at least one level 3 staff member on call at all times to respond to security breaches. Entrance to SCP-83 is permissible to level 1 and 2 personnel with proper clearances, provided they wear a tracking device while inside. Description SCP-83 appears to be an uninhabited two-story row house in a general state of disrepair, 
with an interior of approximately 366 square meters. It is located in the blank block of blank. The deed and property tax records for the address are missing after blank. The last known persons to reside at the address were the blank family, but data expunged. Until acquisition by the a foundation, the property was the reputed office for no, lo, Okono Kayak Stillers who gained the entry to the structure through a front window. Since the locking mechanisms on both the front and back doors were corroded, frozen, and shut, SCP-83 first came to the foundation's attempt and entered on blank, when altercation outside the building resulted in the front door being kicked in by blank and by data expunged. Those who entered through the door of SCP-883, Group A, allegedly found themselves inside a fully furnished and well-maintained home with functioning electricity and a fully stocked kitchen whose appliances and decorates appeared to be from the early 20th century. Personnel who entered through the windows, Group B, described the interior as dark and, and, and dilapidated, corresponding to the view through the windows. Personnel in Group A also reported that they couldn't see, hear, or find any members of Group B inside the house, or of anyone else besides themselves. Group B observed that members of Group A seemed to vanish into thin air upon crossing the door's threshold. Both groups inside the property not only described the very different living conditions, but their descriptions didn't even correspond to the same folklore plan. Their descriptions matched only in the relative position of the windows, since both groups saw the same street view. Personnel outside the house, however, reported only seeing members of Group B. These observations were repeatedly tested and confirmed by staff with the additional finding that the rear door of SCP-83 also leads to the furnished interior. Any non-conventional entry, i.e. windows, holes in the roof, down the chimney, etc. Oh, poor Santa. Leads to the dilapidated interior. And forces inside the differing interiors are unable to detect one another's presence. Or they both register on standard spectral imagery and equipment. So long as said equipment is outside SCP-83. It was also discovered that the furnished interior is not, not static. The floor plan of uh, SCP-83 apparently changes with different layout and different numbers present kinds of rooms manifesting. See document in number 83A. No clear pattern or set interval has been observed in the rearrangement of the interior of SCP-83, but the phenomenon has, has never been directly observed or experienced by, by personnel while inside SCP-83. See a summary of experiment 83-3. Listed as document 83C. So long as the human presence exists inside, uh, the floor plan seems to remain stable. All the furnished interior uh, appears to be well maintained. No inhabitants or custodians have ever been detected. <sighs> Addendum It has been recommended that SCP 83 be evaluated as a possible and autonomous object. Document number 83A. 19 walkthroughs of SCP-83 have been conducted to date, and each has produced a unique floor plan with a combined total of 154 different rooms, with 17 of those rooms present on more than one walkthrough. Though in different locations, see document in number 83B. The room conforms to a variety of the, the rooms conform to a variety of the recreation styles, representative of, of, of major artistic trends of the late 19th and 20th centuries, complete with era of red furnishings and technology. However, each of the 19 floor plans still equaled 366 square meters of space, and in each, and each walkthrough, the front door has so far, consistently led to the same Victorian front parlor design. 
designated FP0. The rear door data expunged. Hmm. Addendum to number 83A. Upon comparative analysis of all recorded floor plans for SCP-83, it has been observed that the small door in the north wall of FP-0 always opens up to reveal a closet. I appear to have gained hiccups. Though the dimensions and the contents of the closets have been varied considerably, a teal and white deluxe convertible upright a Hoover vacuum cleaner has been observed among the contents over 60% of the time. It is unknown why. The three doors lead from FP0, this one, and a Hoover vacuum within, has shown such a high level of conservation when none of the others have. Document number 83C, Summary of the Experiment in 8303. On blank, Dr. Blank entered SCP-83 through the front door and set up three digital cameras. One was placed in the middle of FV0, a second camera on the second and floor or between in DR2 and K4. A third camera in the basement at room ST1. Personnel all entering through FV0 or window A were unable to confirm the existence of any of the rooms nor of the three cameras. So the cameras located inside at SCP-83 were externally confirmed with EM sensors. Observation was conducted for a period of 48 hours, during which time no personnel were allowed to enter, no movements within SCP-83 or any of the rooms were observed, and the camera locations remained fixed. After 48 hours, agents were sent to retrieve the three cameras, but only found one, the camera in FP-0, at the electronically confirmed location. The other two cameras and the rooms in which they were placed were gone, with different rooms in their places. Despite this, the EM sensors continued to detect the electrical signatures of the other two cameras, indicating that they had not shifted position at all. Sweeps of SCP-83 were made hourly for the next 36 hours, and although further room rearrangements were noted, none of the rigged rooms reappeared, and after 36 hours, the signals diminished below the detecting thresholds. Possibly due to a loss of battery power in the two missing cameras. Three weeks later, or SC1 re it occurred in the second floor and its camera was recovered with a dead battery. The third camera remains missing. Note on SCP on 83C memo Dr. Blank requested it was as granted and the permission to repeat as. Experiment 83-3, catalog as Experiment 83-5, which resulted in, in the similar equivalent loss of six more cameras. But the Foundation is, is committed to the pursuit of scientific discovery. It has been decided to abandon further experimentation of this type on SCP-83 until a way can be found to do it without overdrafting the department's budget in order to replace disappeared equipment. Dr. Blank. <sighs> Document 83D. On Blank, agents and, and Smith conducted a walkthrough of SCP-83 and recorded evidence of food with preparation describing a sound like banging pots and pans and a smell of cooking meat. Agent Smith was unable to localize the source of the phenomenon or even find a kitchen. Agent Smith did eventually in Counter dining room, designated DR8, and it was, it was clearly in a, in a state of non unuse. Agent Smith, in the the sound onto the smell, persisted for approximately 20 minutes before fading away. There were no other signs of intruders. Document 83E. On blank, smoke was 
as observed emanated from SCP-83 agents. Agent Smith was dispatched to investigate and found the location designated SR-12 with burning embers in the fireplace. SR-12 had been previously documented as on on SP-83 internal surveys 5 and 6, but in both prior encounters, the fireplace was cold and swept clean. Agent and Smith recovered a partially burned fragment of news friend from the fireplace that expunged, as well as a nub of a blank cigar. A sweep of, S of SP-83 found no other evidence of intruders, and a review of ADO surveillance confirmed no one entering or leaving the house aside from appropriate personnel at expected intervals. Agent Smith remained on site until the fire was out, at which point smoke emanation ceased and did not reoccur. Agent Smith made no alterations to SR-12 and left the premises at blank. 24 hours later, Agent Smith returned to SV-83, but SR-12 was no longer present and had has not been found on three subsequent walkthroughs. Analysis of the blank cigar did not produce any DNA, but did yield data expunge. Addendum. Recommended SCP-83 be evaluated for upgrade to Euclid status. Next we have SCP-84, the Static Tower. <sighs> That's the last one I can read today. Item number, SCP-84, Ultra Class Euclid, Special Criterion Procedures. SCP-84 is currently under a full non-interaction order until the full extension of the emission waves has been evaluated. For detailed uh, documentation on general OF and I order, see document XRG 1182. For detailed documentation on F and I orders in relation to SCP 84, see document XRG 1208A. A continuous surveillance watch is to be maintained and around the active area of SCP 84 with the primary objective of the civilian misdirection and external surveillance. With no major roads, trails, or other travel routes nearby, any civilians encountered or approaching SCP-84 are to be deemed suspect and detained for evaluation. Under no circumstances are any foundation or civilian personnel allowed in the active area of SCP-84, except with express, vocal, and written permission of no fewer than two members of O5 Command. Sentries are to maintain their post position with line-of-sight con. Contact checks on fellow sentries. Conjunction with compass landmark check and landmark checking. All reference tries should be well all outside the active area of SCP-84. Should any entry, uh, any sentry fail to report or then via a vocal roll call, full recall orders will be issued to all sentries and containment will be reevaluated by special response teams. In the event of active area fluctuations, full recall all orders are to be assumed by all active sentries, followed by appropriate action. No form of radio, GPS, television, cell phone, video camera, still picture camera, or any other recall or, electric or electronic media devices are permitted within 100 meters of the active area around SCP-84. Civilians found with such devices within this area are to have said devices confiscated and destroyed immediately. Any recordings collected at that expunged. Description SCP-84 appears to be a large radio tower or position in the center of a large open field with two small outbuildings. You're literally on the side. Don't talk about this stuff. Oh, I need to close that anyway. Direct observation and sample collection from M84 is impossible due to the effect that is emitted at a round or from SCP-84. SV-84 appears to emit a form of wave or radiation that ha 
as a detrimental effect on local space, time, and reality. The most pronounced aspect of this is the alteration of, of local space within the active area of SCP-84. Externally, the active area forms a large dome shape of 200 meters in diameter. SCP-84 appears inside this area at random points, appearing to jump at random times, sometimes even in appearing in multiple locations at once inside the, the active area. Internally, the space appears to be unlimited, with SCP-84 at the center. SCP-84 is impossible to reach due to the emitted effect. Attempts to approach SCP-84 within the active area have turned the observation and that SCP-84 retains its relative position on the horizon. Even after 3 months and 12 days of de a a direct travel by vehicle and on foot, termination tests have, have proved impossible, as no means of destruction are capable of physically reaching SCP-84. If one entered from outside the active area, local space will also will distort periodically. This will cause relative distances to randomly extend or contract in a flicker, causing buildings or objects to suddenly jump thousands of meters away or rush up to other points, sometimes even causing overlaps. These overlaps have a markedly detrimental effect on living tissue. A town of blank is assumed to have been situated in or around the original manifestation of the active area. This town is no longer observable from outside the active area, appearing only once inside the active area. Blank has maintained the same population, 343 humans for a duration of its encapsulation. Births appear to be impossible, along with normal aging patterns. Suicide or homicides might appear to be circumvented by the area effect, with dead subjects flickering and appearing alive and unharmed several seconds after death. There are also reports of rewinding, causing things like moral wounds to visibly freeze and close. Subjects appear to exhibit many effects events of inconsistent space-time. As do most structures for these other observations, see Log 84A4. Electronic devices and recording equipment do not function correctly in or around the active area. Subjects report bizarre or unsettling transmissions from video and audio recording and playback devices. This acts to totally isolate Blank from the outside world, precluding any need for foundation and active containment. It also appears impossible to leave the active area after a random period of time. One subject from Blank found on the grass plane, see log 84A4, reported he had been traveling for six years. He was found approximately 400 meters from Blank City in limits. Well, obviously, we have to read the log before we can end up before we can end out the video. <sighs> so clearly, this is log eighty four a four. Record of observed anomalous effects. Um, I mean, observed anomalous events relating to SCP eighty four. Detailed observation made of the grass plane and making up the majority of the active area. The plane appears to be made of 10 meter by 10 meter er section of grass, or repeated endlessly to make up the plane. Sections appear to be randomly rotated or as they are formed, causing sections of grass and small ground variations to line up incorrectly. Few non-human organisms appear to exist within the active area. Those outside the area avoided and appear to vanish shortly after entry. Animals observed inside the active area appear normal but behave strangely, showing movement, sudden shivering, repeated loops, and other abnormal actions appear to indicate these may not be actual animals. Most animals appear to flicker and vanish after 3 to 4 hours. Vocal communication is difficult within the active area. Vocal communication appears no more than 5 meters of the speaking subject, with reports of a slightly muffled quality reported commonly. Kind of like how, my, how I sound like I'm talking to a cabbage all the time, as I've been told. Outside 5 meters, subjects appear to be speaking from a great distance with a great deal of echoing. 
reports of speech being heard several seconds after the subject has stopped speaking, and speech occurring with no subject speaking are also not uncommon. Detailed observation of the radio tower is impossible due to, to the inability to physically reach it, and the effect of the broadcast on most observational equipment. Basic telescope or binocular systems show the tower to be hazy and static fogged, which, while more advanced equipment, is subject to the anomalous broadcast effect. Weather patterns, as well as basic day-night cycles, appear to be totally random. Overhead sky will randomly cycle between day, night, clear, and other weather patterns. Relative sun and cloud positions appear random as well as well, with frequent flickering and blurring between different states. <sighs> Physical alteration or damage to anything within the active area is impossible. Actions such as digging, demolition, and new constructions will suddenly blur and reset to their previous unaltered state at random points. Subjects inside a reset structure, such as inside a house, will become instantly trapped and fused. So, humans in the active area around SCP-84 exert frequently more striking and easily observed reality distortion effects. These include a sudden blurring of limbs or head, appearing to suddenly gyrate at, at high speed for several seconds before ending. Subjects experience no pain and are often unaware of this phenomenon. Looping typically manifesting as a repeating of 8 to 20 seconds of time, so which will go through an action, example exiting a doorway, picking up an article of clothing, then suddenly freeze and flicker, then return to the original safe, arguing position of the loop, and repeat the action. Even if this involves a sudden teleportation of significant distance, rarely subjects appear to become caught on in a permanent loop. Observation and interrogation of subjects in blank show that basic human needs such as food, water, and sleep are no longer required after prolonged exposure to the active area. Some report Arts having made a 2001, 2010, no, 2110 unsuccessful suicide attempts. So it's well, uh, sometimes we able to pass through solid uh, matter without incident. These periods appear uh, to last for random periods of time and begin to end, end without warning. So it's inside solid matter, or when the period ends, will become trapped or fused until the period resumes. One subject reports being trapped below or the waist in a wall or for two years. Extreme psychological distress is observed after long-term exposure. The transmissions that expunge barrier, which is compromised at, for long-term exposure. Subjects in advanced reception states typically reset after several months. Recorded transmissions so, oh, a slight that expunge cycles overall. Attempting to catalog and record these broadcasts as therefore has therefore been remanded to autonomous systems to preclude any loss of foundation personnel. This has been SCP-80, 81, 82, 83, and 84. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like on the video, leave a comment down below, and subscribe to the channel.